This wasn't Newcastle fans celebrating a win, but a whole new chapter under new owners back in 2021. We would take anyone. We would take just Barry from down the road or just anyone that could buy the club. But it wasn't Barry down the road, but a group led by the PIF, a Saudi Arabian wealth fund which bought the club. Critics argued this was sports washing, alleging that the state ultimately itself had control in the club. But the Premier League, Newcastle and the PIF all denied this, saying there was a clear separation between the country and the takeover. They are legally binding assurances that the, essentially the state will not be in control of the club. Uh, and the sequelae of that is, if we find evidence to the contrary, we can remove the consortium as owners uh, of the club in, in accordance with the rules. That's all under question now. Because in US court documents this week, the PIF admitted that Yasser al rumayan the chairman of Newcastle, is, quote, a sitting minister of the Saudi government, and that the PIF is a sovereign instrumentality of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. With Newcastle not offering comment, it was up to the manager to take the questions. What have you made of the situation, and have you had to seek any assurances from above that, that everything is, is, is OK? I've not seeked any assurances. To be honest, I've not given it too much time. Um, I'm aware of the headlines. I've seen the headlines, but I haven't really invested in, in the details behind it. The Premier League also refused to comment today, but reports suggest other clubs in the league are angered by these developments, and Amnesty International has called on the Premier League to re-examine the takeover. Newcastle fans who do have concerns about Saudi own ownership should look at this as an opportunity to speak out about those concerns to highlight the cases of people who have been persecuted by the Saudi state uh, and, and ultimately maybe have a bit more faith that Newcastle can be a successful club without requiring the support of a murderous regime to do it. This raises questions about reforming the game just a week after the government announced plans for a new independent regulator in England, one that would oversee a new owner's test with MPs hoping it would eventually rule on matters just like Newcastle. Will any strengthened owners and directors test overseen by the independent regulator take into account human rights violations and will it make a proper assessment when it comes to ownership and bids that are likely to be connected to state ownership? What we will ensure is, first of all, we will know who the owners actually are and that person will have to go through a fit and proper persons test so that we can exactly examine the points uh, that I think all of the fans want to see. In the meantime, with Manchester United currently being bid for by the Qataris, will the Premier League ever change the rules itself? There has been talk from the Premier League with regards to some form of moral or ethical code being introduced. Whether this will apply retrospectively, we don't know. And whether it will have genuine teeth, because one man's, one man's tyrant is another man's hero. With any reform a long way off, the focus returns to the football this weekend. Come on, Newcastle! First game up, Newcastle take on Manchester City, who were recently charged for alleged historical financial breaches they have always vociferously denied any wrongdoing. They're also owned by Abu Dhabi's royal family. An example of how in this global league, the story is often not made on the pitch, but off it.